What makes us ride in a car at 65 miles an hour on a busy highway? Or a commuter train at 200 miles an hour? Why do we put ourselves and loved ones in harm's way without thinking twice? Or provide our private information online to banks, merchants, and healthcare providers without blinking? The answer? Trust. Trust that organizations we rely on design their products and services to protect our safety and security. Trust that they're using the best safety and security technology. Trust that they've audited their supply chains and understand the safety of every component. Trust is fragile and must be earned every day. At BlackBerry, we've built our reputation on trust. It's in our DNA. We work with businesses and governments, providing a foundation to preserve their customers' trust. Today, connected devices represent a rapidly growing attack surface for threat actors. As the IoT and cybersecurity converge, BlackBerry is setting a new standard for trust in the connected world. Our embedded IoT software is certified to the highest level of safety. Our IoT business had 94 design wins in the last year. And by adding 20 million vehicles on the road with our IoT software, our total now stands at more than 235 million. We're trusted by 17 of the G20 governments. We have the most government security certifications of any UEM in the world. And we are recognized with a customer's choice distinction in the 2023 Gartner Peer Insights Voice of Customer Ratings for Unified Endpoint Management. BlackBerry SecuSuite, our secure voice and text solution, earned 13 government security certifications and the highest level of security accreditation by the NATO Communications and Information Agency. And BlackBerry Ad Hoc, our FedRAMP authorized emergency mass communication tool, which has the most ATOs of any CEM solution, helps keep more than 70% of all U.S. federal employees safe. Our seventh generation Silence AI and machine learning models are the most sophisticated yet. And we're number one in EPP efficacy. It's why we've stopped 1.5 million malware-based cyber attacks in the last quarter. Today, we see unprecedented opportunities for connected devices built on a safe, secure foundation. In fact, McKinsey's report on the convergence of cybersecurity and the IoT cited BlackBerry as uniquely positioned to capitalize on the $750 billion total addressable market forecasted for convergence by 2030. The new era of smart, connected devices and infrastructure is complex and must be protected to the highest standards. As a leader in building the foundation for our converged future, BlackBerry is investing and innovating to ensure tomorrow's hyper-connected world remains safe, secure, and trusted for all. Okay. Um, so I think the video pretty much uh, covered my presentation. Um, <laughs> um, so, welcome everybody. I'm very excited uh, to be here and to really talk through where the company has been and where the company is going. Um, and if you notice, I put up the first slide, it said IoT and cybersecurity. And um, this is a slide that I hope is not, or I hope it's familiar to you. Um, I had, Thing our team have been using this particular size for the last three years. Um, and, well, our team has been using, people are correcting me right now in the room. Uh, I, I think I presented this two years ago um, at, at our AGM and maybe at our security uh, summit also. But nevertheless, it, I, the key point is we've been on the strategy of IoT and cybersecurity as two really high growth markets that will come together and to achieve, you know, what's the maximum potential of, of the, you know, smart world, so to speak. So just want to remind you that this is not a new concept that we laid out. This concept, honestly speaking, the reason I used the three or four years prior, it really kept 
completed with the acquisition of Silence. Is we have always been doing the endpoint management as a company, whether it started with uh, just mobile devices to expand it to all the endpoints, um, and, and the support of the management of the endpoint, the creation of the security profile around it, et cetera, et cetera. And then we added to how the endpoints stop the threats, how to attack, how to, how to make sure that the malware doesn't attack the collection of endpoint, because we believe that without that, you don't have trust, like the video said, and without trust, you actually don't have a potential usage and, 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 and reach the, the, the maximum potential of IoT, of everything you guys want to talk about today, AI, the cloud, the connectivity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this has been the thesis of BlackBerry. It's been the thesis of BlackBerry for many years, and um, and I'm glad that we're starting to feel the traction in the market, and we'll something to discuss a little later. So the first thing that you notice on the left hand side today, the IoT adoption of endpoints are, has a very very high growth in percentage, but not necessarily so much as the number of counts. Then so, you know the slides clearly show you. That in the year of 2025, you know, expecting 27 billion IoT endpoints out there, um, and we see that in both the IT world and the OT world, and particularly in the OT world as device manufacturer, whether it's medical equipment or industrial equipment, et cetera, et cetera, um, are starting to modernize their their devices that in the operation technology world. Uh, to be internet enabled, to be smart enabled, to be able to interconnect with various elements on um, areas that are endpoints, and to create the potential of AI technology to make decisions on by machine. But you could see also that according to Atlantic Council, this is this is from Atlantic Council, I believe, um, research that this growth of the I, IoT endpoints it's gonna slow somewhat. And I was actually surprised that it's 12% caker because you know, today, everybody, virtually everybody in the industry is talking about endpoint explosion. And, and again, you know, the numbers are there. Uh, I, I believe the research does say something really meaningful because if you go to the right-hand side slide, it's really talking about the cost of the cybersecurity. And this is obviously cost of ransomware, cost of malware, cost of interruption, denial of services, and, and the list goes on. And if you notice that it could really cost up to $90 trillion in the, in the years to come. And so because of that cost being skyrocketed, that actually why the slowdown of the IoT endpoints adoption. So what's this natural logical solution of this? The element of trust. Um, on the left hand side, you can see many, many pillars regarding things that we know very well, like the cloud, the telecom, the semiconductors, the software providers, the provider of the software obviously also provide the AI, AI algorithm. And if you, you, you combine that, uh, those advantage um, in the IT and OT world, what is really missing like we talk about in the video, like I just spent 10 minutes on, is that how do we trust the environment? How do we trust that the data being generated that drive all the action, whether it's machine or otherwise, could be trustworthy? And this is the reason why um, somebody asked me a question, what do we expect to see BlackBerry in 10 years? Well, I hope if we could achieve what we said we're gonna do in providing hypersecurity, and trust elements to the communication of endpoints and the management and behavior of endpoints and to trust the data being generated that we have a really, really rightful place in the years to come, in the decades to come. So hopefully in the 10 years, we'll be doing, you know, we'll be known for the one that you provided all the trusted certificate, trusted authority uh, to operate, trusted environment in a smart world. This, here you look at it as, as a city, because the city is a clear way to 
to look at all the endpoints interaction that are very from very different sources asynchronously. Um, so I think there are plenty to do, obviously, and this is a really, really exciting world to come. So let me uh, switch gear to a little bit about the 20, FY23, our, our, our accomplishment. First on the financial accomplishment, uh, we can hit a little bit of the macro. Um, if you notice, three years ago from a revenue, software services revenue, this does not include um, IP revenue. This purely is the IoT revenue adding to the cybersecurity revenue. Um, uh, in, the, in the fiscal year 21, uh, it was majorly impacted by COVID and the pandemic. It rebounded a year later. And then, and then the macro set in with the interest rate hike. So we see a little decline there. Um, but I really look at all these things that as short term. I mean, we hope, we wish we could have overcome some of the short term, um, but the fact of the matter is we, we were not ready to overcome it at that time. And so, however, if you look at the strategy that we laid out, um, I joined a company in 2013, late 2013, and we embarked on switching from a consumer hardware centric business on making cell phones to a enterprise software centric world. And, and I just, and, and so there are many reasons for it and I don't want to belabor the point here, but you could see that um, since then we have a pretty impressive 88% growth and has been doing reasonably well and become um, at least a key player in both the IoT world as well as in the cybersecurity world. And of course, we expect it to even do better as time progresses. Um, some of these that's been covered in the video, um, every year we have an outside firm do, an out, do a vehicle count. And this is a net vehicle count of 20 million from a year ago, uh, additional 20 million. And, um, and it's really important because, you know, uh, in, in this world, a billion dollar, a billion vehicle, not dollar, a billion vehicle out there, um, a lot of them are low-end vehicle. Um, Tim like the Tuk Tuk <laughs> as an example. Uh, those, of course, doesn't have smart intelligent software platform in it, um, so the, but that's counted as one of the one billion uh, vehicle counts. So we have a pretty sizable market share and it's gaining on net basis. If you look at the vehicle count increase, it's 9% net, meaning that the retired vehicle uh, replaced by the new vehicle, the new vehicle also in majority carrying using QNX technology. So it's exciting for us. Uh, that we continue to gain market share in this in this environment. Um, and it's being highlighted by the next spot, which is the 640 million of backlog. That only represents nine months. In fact, you know, you guys remember it was 460. This was a year ago, right? Um, 460 million backlog, 480. Yeah, in Q1 the year before. Right, right, in Q1 the year before. We then, you know, decided instead of making the announcement at AGM every year, we should align that with our, of our fiscal year calendar, which was March 1. So this is a nine months results of growth. So, so we're very, we feel very good about, and then of course the design wins, we have 94 design wins and one third in auto, two third in jam, which is, is set for January, generally embedded market, a general embedded market. And then in that general embedded market, you go to the, the next row, um, nine out of 10 medical OEMs, and then in the car, in the auto space, 24 of the top 25 EVs OEMs by volume. The top 25 is by volume. And then of course, um, we are famous for our safety certification, um, and we have 12, real-time operating system certification. We believe we are the number one in the world. Moving to the cyber side, uh, you heard from the video, um, from a security certification point of view, 
we are number one in the UEM. Uh, we have the largest malware um, by us absorbing and acquired silence and integrate that into the smart platform. Um, and we, ha we have the highest authority to operate in CDM, which is critical event management. Um, and, and, uh, and with 22 different countries using it. As the video has said, 70% of the United States federal government employee are protected by our CEM. Um, and the 13th, Secti Smart, this is secure voice and tax technology. Uh, NATO loves it, as you saw that in the video. Uh, 22 countries using it, and it, the count will go up next year. Um, we have a lot of good pipelines in the picture. Uh, 17 of the G20, um, that that actually came down by one from period count uh, because we have ceased our operation in Russia for all the obvious reasons. Um, we we combined the BlackBerry best endpoint management and the Silence best endpoint security into the Spark platform. And, and we now recently, and some of you who follow the stock knows that, you know, we struggle with it a little bit, but the integration for at least two, three years. I'm really, really pleased that the latest set of releases in the platform at high renewal rate is well received by the customers. We finally conquer our own, own problems and it has a very high NPS rate. Uh, 80 is really high um, in the industry. So very pleased with the progress we are making and how we position ourselves on the future profitable growth. Um, you all know that we, are, we spend a lot of money, uh, over 30% of revenue on engineering. And, and it's kind of this company, like a lot of the technology company, are very focused on innovation. Um, and, and a way to, uh, to, to highlight our information is look at the patent, the patent granted and the patent applications in place. So, um, so you can see that we now currently have 8,000 uh, patent family uh, spread around uh, IV, IoT, and cybersecurity. We have 500 applications in the last year that was either approved or pending, uh, and we will obviously continue this effort as one of the key efforts. Moving on the product releases, so 46 products released, and, and we counted relatively major, not, not just a revision update. So that, that, that's probably in the hundreds. Uh, and uh, of the 46 percent, uh, 46 product, uh, 11 of them in IoT, the balance of them are cybersecurity. Car count, we already told you about this, 31 um, percent Kager from kind of the counting it from the 2014 point of view uh, to now. So again, you know, something that we are very proud of. And we'll, with the backlog we have, Touch wood, we believe this car count will continue to go up and, and outpace the market growth. And why? Because we're actually a lot more in the car now. Um, and I can I don't want to go through everything here, but these are all the application and functions that we provide to the OEMs, the tier one, and, and others uh, in the auto space. If you see the red dots are the one that kind of 10 years ago we started our campaign with. Um, and it was hands-free telematics and infotainment. And as those become a little bit more commoditized, um, we, we have been investing and in growing our footprint in a lot of the areas um, like uh, smart battery management, body control, clusters, dashboards, cockpit, hypervisors, ADOS, yeah, OTA, and the list just goes on. And you can see the functionality level is also much higher and, and hoping that this will drive more usage in the car and a higher average selling price. And this is where a lot of you I know is interested and in focused on our pool. We are too. We, we are gonna get the R pool in both have more copies deeper in the stack and a much more um, critical functionality 
uh, like safety, for example. So, you know, the best days yet to come. Uh, this, the, the video shown, we also get some industry accolade. The most impressive one, that the most, the one that's most satisfying to us is we are the customer choice of UEM. I think you, know, you could do a lot of the analysts decided, you know, which quadrant you're in. It's, uh, it's based on that particular individual or small team's analysis. Could be right, could be wrong, but the customers are not. You know, for them to take the time to vote for us in, independently, uh, that tells you a lot. All right, um, so, so we will treasure this very much. And so are the major partners. This is, depict, you know, we pick one of each area. So it's not because we only have four partners speaking good for us. It's that, you know, Secti Smart and QNX and IV and UEM. This is how those four columns are. I, this is a slide that is in the slide deck. You'll be able to read it um, at your leisure. Another major effort is sustainability. And I know it's important to all of us. And, and BlackBerry does it in multiple, multiple vectors. Obviously, we've been carbon neutral a year ago. We maintain our carbon neutrality. Um, and you use a lot of cloud technology and so forth to, to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, but also, we focus and research and spend research and partnership on other areas like the STEM, STEM education, um, like water treatment, uh, clean water uh, projects. Um, and we publish our USG, ESG report the first time. And we also have very a, a big focus on diversity, not only at the board level, but at diversity and equitability um, at, at the rank and file level. And in fact, so much so that the um, diversity goal and the equitability goal is part of our bonus plan. Um, on May 17, we, we uh, hosted a analyst day where we laid out, you know, why we are bullish for the three years to come. And so we laid out our three year plans and, and this is really uh, a, a, a graphical summary of what, what we laid out um, on that day. Uh, we believe IoT will grow somewhere between 18 to 22% for the next three years on a CAGA basis. Uh, and cyber will go somewhere between 9 to 12 percent. Both of them, I believe, is higher than the industry average uh, of what they expected. Now, um, the, the nice and exciting thing about our three-year plan is, which I just presented to you, uh, does not include what we call the upside potential. And there are three of them. And, and I think you, once I finish this in the next five minutes, um, I hope you concluded that there are some, some real opportunity here. Uh, the first one is on licensing. As you all know, we completed our internal project for Evergreen. Uh, we took our non-core portion of the, of the it's over 30,000, uh, patent family, and these are cell phone networking type patterns. Um, we have then we have sold it to KPI, um, a, a, um, a, a operating group out in Ireland, actually, um, for a sum total of $900 million. Um, $200 million has been guaranteed with $170 million already remitted to us. Um, and then there is a profit sharing scheme between us uh, of the remaining 700 million, of which I could tell you there's a really big pipeline behind it, but it might take a while. Um, it will, because it started the process and they have a, as I said, they have a pretty good operating team uh, driving that. Um, we also, the nice part of this um, arrangement of this transaction that BlackBerry got to keep all the ongoing revenue that for pre-existing arrangements, from pre-existing arrangements. So this is why you still see a small number of revenue in IP on a quarterly basis from us. 
And this will allow BlackBerry, the company, to pull all the resources and focus on IoT and cybersecurity and the convergence of it. And then the next thing is on Ivy. Um, this is our joint development project with Amazon. Uh, although we intended to be a cloud agnostic. Um, this is the edge to cloud compute engine. The first application of this, this is not limited to auto only, but the first application of this is on auto, probably because our deep roots in auto and our, and our name and our reputation in there, and probably because it's something that um, Amazon really were interested in, in exploring this particular market. Um, the details of it, um, you know, I don't have time to, today, this morning, to go over everything, um, but it's uh, a very exciting project, making great progress. Actually, I think I have a slide on that. Um, in fact, we're expecting revenue in the next couple of years. We have built a ecosystem of application and use cases. Uh, we have made number of venture-based investment ourselves to ensure that these application and the latest version of that will appear on BlackBerry IV first. So, so we definitely are very much leading the field. Uh, with an architecture, by the way, uh, it's now proven to be the right, right architecture, which is a combination of edge and cloud. And, and other cloud-based only company um, are struggling to, to make uh, a profit because the cloud cost is so high and, uh, and the data volume, it escalated on, on a daily basis. So us not only providing security and privacy with the edge compute engine, and then whatever the application or the customer would like that those data to transmit from edge to cloud to create more AI-based knowledge, um, that's controllable. So we control both um, privacy and it control costs, expenses. And we've been on track on, on all our milestone on IV and lots of POC, lots of interest, proof of concept that is. Um, and, and, and we have one, one um, uh, uh, one customers, um, a Chinese firm called Patel. The third element of potential upside is that if you go to the McKinsey published reports, um, the earlier discussion that we had regarding why is the IoT endpoint growth slow down to 12% CAGR, uh, and because of the cybersecurity needs needs to be fulfilled first, uh, the, that's called a convergence. So I'll I'll, I'll read uh, the what McKinsey had written. Uh, few companies such as BlackBerry sit at the intersection of cybersecurity and IoT are well positioned to many enterprise to marry the enterprise cybersecurity solution with the IoT platforms. Of course, they wrote it. I would have wrote it more more elegantly, um, but appreciate that recognition. So those were the three um, upside to our three-year plan that we announced to the, to the world on, on May 17. Um, a, a few words on a project Imperium, which we kicked off on May 1st. Uh, both the board and the management are driving this. Um, I gave you the operating plan. You know, we have a good three-year plan that focuses on growing and grow focus on profitability. And we believe that if we could achieve that, the share prices and the value of the company will greatly be enhanced and much value will be created. However, notwithstanding that, recognizing the fact that our stock has not performed for a number of of uh, months, years, or quarters uh, to the to what we expected, the fair value of our of our enterprise. We do, we kick off a project called the Imperium projects, and and the idea is to look at alternatives and options. Uh, if there are alternative options exist, 
to enhance the shareholder value. And, and obviously, focusing on the element of time versus execution risk. So we are, we are hired, the bank had hired two bankers, uh, Morgan Stanley and Perla Weinberg. We have law firm lined up um, and we are reviewing our portfolio and, and looking at where the strength and where the weaknesses are. And this is to the extent that I could comment on. Um, I thought that it would be important to all of you to know that we were not just sticking our head in the sand and expect everything I laid out will, will go um, as smooth as, as, as it planned. Um, we also want to make sure that we have, if there are other ways to enhance shareholder value, uh, we look at it. So that's, that's a sum total. We, I'm not going to report it on an ongoing basis, but as soon as the board of directors had approved and make some decision on the outcome, or terminated a review, I will communicate that. So with that, I believe that's all the material that I have prepared. Thank you everybody for attending. We look forward to welcome you again at next year's meeting. Have a great day.